Hi my loves, today I'm going to be doing for you a super exciting video. I'm going to be doing a shelf tour for you of my bookshelves behind me. The reason I'm doing this is because I had to rejig my bookshelves recently. Behind these bookshelves is an old fireplace and because of that, on either side of the fireplace I had um, space going back into my shelves, the kind of space that you can see at the top here. But on the other side of the bookshelves, I lost that space recently because we put some aircon behind it. So I lost a lot of space um, behind behind the first layer of books. So I had to rejig my bookshelves in the time that I'd taken to put the aircon in as well. I had accumulated a fair number of books, um, so I really had to think carefully about how I was going to arrange my books and I did most of that on Instagram for you guys and I did like a mini shelf tour once I'd finished that and I asked you guys if you would like to see something a bit more official on YouTube so that's why I'm doing this here today um but it's kind of a nonsensical time for me to do this video because you can't actually see a lot of my books because of the way I've had to arrange them but I'm gonna do it anyway, um, but fingers crossed, sometime in the not too distant future, I will have my own place with a lot more shelving for books because I have truly outgrown these shelves now um, in the kind of four or five years that they've been up. I'm gonna do, yeah, I'm gonna do a little informal shelf tour today. I was gonna be all cute for you guys, but then um, I got a bit chilly. So I'm wearing a big old cozy jumper and we're just gonna chat through some of my books. Now, I started to watch a couple shelf tours just to see how other people did them. People were showing like every single book when they had like 800 plus books. I'm not going to be doing that for you guys today. You can rest easy. This is probably not going to be a massively long video because like I said, it's going to make more sense to do this properly when you can actually see all of the books. I'm just going to talk you guys through anything that comes to mind whilst I'm doing my shelf tour. Quickly before I forget, on my blog, I am doing like shelf tours of kind of each individual shelf. I've only done two so far, I think. But if there's a shelf that you see and you want me to kind of talk through all of the books on that shelf in like mini review form please leave comments down below I love doing those posts but I don't always want to bombard you guys with them because I feel like my blog could easily turn into book central so I've been trying to space them out and do it slowly for you guys but if there is a shelf that you think that you want me to talk about in more detail then I will do a shelf tour and you can keep up to date on my Instagram on my Twitter on my blog posts. Anywho, let's get into the video. We're gonna start with this side of the room. So I'm on my tiptoes at the moment just to show you guys this top shelf. I think my room must be super wonky because I'm struggling with the tripod at the moment. So, so with this whole section on the left hand side, looking at it face on, of my bookshelves, this used to be my like childhood section. So it had all my young adult books, all my books that I read when I was a kid, um, which was a lot because I read a lot as a kid, probably, well, as much as I do now, probably more than I had done for like the past few years whilst I was busy at uni. So I had a lot of young adult and kids books. Um, but because I've had to rearrange things, I've pretty much put most of the kids books and the young adult books to the back um, and brought most of the adult books forward just for now, just so I can see more of my adult books. I am keeping all my kids books, by the way, you guys, because they have great sentimental value to me and I hope that one day I can pass them on to my kids as well and have like a whole library for them. But anyway, the top two um, shelves up here do have some young adult and kids books on them just because I had a bloody job lot of them. I think there's like three, I don't know if you guys can see, there's more books there. Three layers here, um, goes three layers deep. There's some standing up at the back which are like nice and short. Then there's two layers of these um, piled books. Um, I've got some Celia Reese books, which I remember loving. Don't know what they're about now. I've got uh, a teenage classic Twilight up here, up here even, um, and various other bits. So I can come down and be a bit more normal now. Um, but the way my library is organised is mostly by emotions, feelings, and times of my life. I don't really organise by genre or anything like that, or colour as you can see, it looks a mess. Um, I just group books in groups that make sense in my head. I also apologise for my spotlights, um, it is getting dim and dark outside, it's only just after lunch. That is alas the time of year that we're dealing with. 
I'm sorry about this the kind of yellow spotlight but I need the lights on today also I actually had a question the other day about why I keep all my books including the ones that I don't love especially I know this must be a particularly pertinent question at the moment post Marie Kondo I think this question was actually pre Marie Kondo um, or Marie Kondo madness anyway I keep all my books because I find that they are like a catalogue of my memories um, and feelings and emotions and parts of my life including those books that I didn't like and even sometimes I find that the books that I didn't like or had a very strong reaction to are the ones that I that carry the most memories for me so I find like a bookshelf like someone's bookshelf if you are lucky enough to keep your books and I know that I am I'm super privileged to have a collection like this to have space for a collection like this um, I find them to be like a catalogue of someone's mind and how they think and why they think how they think um, so that's why I keep my books I just love for my family now and my future family I hope to be able to like browse some of these books and like pick things out for themselves and I like being able to pick things off the shelf and like recommend them to people and so I hope that kind of makes sense um, anyway right back to the shelves now so this shelf here is um, a mixture of things it's a lot of these books are books that I read on my gap year so they're kind of grouped together and I read all my gap year books on my kindle so I ended up buying physical copies of the books as well so a lot of them kind of look unread particularly sadly my Game of Thrones um, books which I remember getting to the end of um, Dance with Dragons on my kindle and then I hadn't even realised that the series wasn't finished and of course I'm still waiting five years later for the next instalment um, so Naked Lunch by William Burroughs I read that on my gap year. I read The God of Small Things on my gap year I think. I read Captain Corelli's Mandolin um, and there's some other books as well that I've read whilst I'm travelling up here like Paul Theroux's The Mosquito Coast, the Kazuo Ishiguro ones which I think I read when I was in Mexico. So lots of the books that I read whilst I was away um, but there are some other ones up here as well just ones that I've read more recently just because this is a good paperback shelf for me so I have shoved in a few that I have read recently and I think I'm gonna have to take my pineapple out soon um, so I can make some more room um, these are also stacked deep three times there's some um, there's two layers of books behind there <laughs> which are mostly um, young adult books um, but yeah, some of my favourites from this shelf are probably Captain Corelli's Mandolin, that's a classic. I've got um, My Chimamanda and Goat Siadichis on this shelf as well, including Purple Hibiscus. This is her first one, I believe. Um, I remember reading this when I was almost definitely too young to read it. That's a bit untrue because I definitely understood it, um, but it would be interesting to reread this now. But yeah, 2000 and this edition published in 2005, so I would have only been... 11? 12? I don't know. <laughs> My maths is really bad, you guys. So, next shelf down, we have a lot more kind of recent books. On this shelf, I have, of course, this is kind of dictated as well by height of book. All these books are not standard paperback size, so obviously I've had to group some of them together. Um, they're also, I've realised, I shouldn't have filmed this without kind of sorting these shelves out, but you know they look well loved so we've got some older books here like wicked and the invisible bridge i read years and years and years ago but um a lot of these books i've read more recently so we've got some jane smiley's here octavia butler a couple of uh books from my african-american masters course frankenstein in baghdad which i read this year finished this year some samuel r delaney's um and james kelman's dirt road as well favorites from this shelf would probably be Samuel R. Delaney's Tales of Navarion, which I reviewed in one of my book videos. It's like, there are four of these books. The second one I wasn't so keen on, but this is the first one. Really interesting short stories, which are about um, a long ago land on civilization's brink, but they're also like super theoretical. There's some like Derrida quotes. So if you're doing English literature, they're kind of great great stories um i liked i really liked frankenstein and baghdad i love a thousand acres by jane smiley it's one of my new favorite books that was on my list for my favorite books for 2018 um and as you can see again i've got some more um kiddie books at the back here 
onto this side this is a bunch of well this is a book about Alexander McQueen but this is a bunch of like theoretical books just stuff that I picked up during my masters I think most of these are um, including my beloved Geontologies by Elizabeth Pavanelli which was very important to my dissertation and then I've got some of Zach's cookbooks and these will be living in our future kitchen and he's actually got a bunch of cookbooks downstairs as well. Do you call them cookbooks? I'm now having like a mind blank. Is it cookbooks or something else? Um, but some of them are obviously living up here now and I quite like the way they look and they, the way they kind of break up the shelves a little bit. Okay, on this shelf um, we have obviously lots of hardback and um, we've got a real mixture a lot of stuff I have read recently mixed in with some older stuff mixed in with some kids stuff as well that was just a little bit too tall to store, to store anywhere else favourites being The Overstory by Richard Powers which was also on my 2018 faves list Book of Dust by Philip Pullman I've got an alethiometer tattooed on me if you guys didn't know I'm a big fat geek Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials trilogy was very important to me as a child so when he brought out the book of dust I was obviously thrilled yeah some of the young adult stuff like the Icarus girl um, I really really loved I don't quite remember it I kind of remember it we've got like my Garth Nix a porcelain here um, which before I rejigged my shelves all my series is were in one place um, but I have had to break some of them up for size reasons but I will um, reunite them all on their future bookshelves don't worry it, it hurts my heart too um, we've got a lot of the man book of 2018 books here as well the Mars room normal people milkman um, everything under uh, milkman I really enjoyed I was on my list for 2018 as well down at the bottom here I have more paperbacks um, that I've read probably in the last couple of years most of them um, this shelf is mostly ones I've read probably in the last year or so we've got um, The Colour Purple by Alice Walker on here, American Gods by Neil Gaiman, Dorothy Allison's Bastard Out Carolina which actually should live with the other Penguin modern classics but that'll be something to sort out some other time I can't even remember what, what I think this trilogy is called 100,000 Ki Kingdoms but I've got N.K. Jemisin's like first ever series that she brought out um, Han Kang's The White Book so these are all fairly recent as are these ones these ones are mostly books that I read at uni either in my masters or in my undergrad so we've got some of the Scottish ones here like Alan Warner's Morven Kalar um, Andrew O'Hagan's Our Fathers and then we've got some of my like um, Caribbean and African literature ones here we've got Doris Lessing's Gold Notebook which is the first book I read for my masters all books that remind me of uni basically are up here and then on this shelf I've got a mixture of things I've got some photo albums here um, I've got a lot of the things that I was required to buy for uni like my um, Norton anthologies which I cannot bear to be parted from you guys I know people sell theirs but I'm keeping mine um, I've got some history books that I bought when I was at school which I found really interesting um, about various courses that I did and then at the bottom I've got some of my like baby books unfortunately when I was probably about 10 or 11 um, a lot of my favorite books as a kid that I must have read over and over again just the little ones that you get for um, like little kids were destroyed by flooding so I've, n I've got a limited number I've them far away from any basements where they could be flooded now and they live up here with me but that's the kind of thing that obviously I will kind of probably store separately in my future home from my normal books um, but just currently I'm slightly limited for space up here so I'm storing things on the bookshelves that I probably wouldn't eventually. Um, I've got more photo albums and notebooks here and then I've got a bunch of horrible histories here which is quite an impressive collection if I do say so myself. So we are now in the middle section of the room. Up here I have mostly books of short stories of various descriptions. Uh, ones that I've read more recently including Young Skins by Colin Barrett. In the middle here we have books that Zach plans to read. This is his to read shelf. I wanted to keep it separate from my own because I wasn't supposed to be buying any books and these are new um, and these are for a holiday. Then over on the right here 
here I have mostly just books that are small enough to sit up here. So um, important ones including Barbara Kingsolver's The Poisonwood Bible which is a classic and I remember loving it when I read it. Um, we've got Dave Eggers The Circle, we've got The Godfather up here, uh, The Narrow Road to the Deep North but I think probably my favourite one on that shelf is the Poisonwood Bible. Um, these two shelves I have done in-depth shelf tours on, so I will leave links to those down below for you guys because I know it's probably going to be a little bit more tricky to see some of the text, especially on the Penguin Classics. But here we've got the kind of modern classics, so we've got um, the James Joyce, the Marquez, Carson McCullers, Ralph Ellison, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Ragtime, um, Tony Morrison's Beloved, Salman Rushdie's The Midnight's Children, all of those are sitting together nicely on that shelf. And then on this shelf we have obviously all of the older classics, the Austins, the Dickens, the Hardy, um, some of which I haven't read yet, um, they don't live on the to be read shelf which makes me forget about them which is a bit bad of me. Obviously you guys can see that those are well loved, particularly my copy of Tale of Two Cities which is um, completely ruined from me taking it on holiday. I don't like the cover of that one very much either. I've realised not showed you guys any covers but these penguin classics have the most gorgeous co covers. That's The Heart is a Lonely Hunter, super gorgeous cover. Um, they change them every few years as well, so some of the more recent ones actually have nicer covers. One of my favourite books, which is How Late It Was, How Late. So I brought you down a little bit, you guys, because these shelves are very important. This is a favourite shelf, or like a very important to my reading who I am kind of shelf. Um, so this shelf goes way, way back to a lot of Jostein Garda's work. Um, I read this stuff when I was probably about 10 or 11 and it really changed the way I thought reading could be because it's very philosophical. So like Sophie's World is the most um, famous of those but I remember loving, where is it? Actually I think I might have lost my copy of it but it was, it's called Solitaire or something? The Solitaire Mystery. Well, that's supposed to be here with the rest but it's not here. <laughs> anyway, um, Yes, so lots of your Garda back here and then we've got some ones that really stuck with me from Edinburgh like Marilyn Robinson's um, Housekeeping, Alistair Gray's 1982 Janine and his Poor Things as well, a few of the African novels um, including Bessie Head's A Question of Power, Googie's Devil on the Cross. Um, we've got The Master and the Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov which was an extremely important novel for me as well, I think I read that again probably around the same time as I was reading the, these ones and it's an incredible novel. I would like to go back and read some of these by the way because I don't really quite remember now everything that they were about and I think I'd probably appreciate them more or hate them now that I'm a bit older. Um, you never quite know so don't, I don't want you guys to judge me if you read some of these and you're like uh, we've got Nabokov's Lolita here which is a tough book. Um, we've got more Alistair Gray in Lanark then we've of course got my N.K. Jemisin Broken Earth trilogy, That's, this is what I wrote my dissertation on and her short story collection that she recently released. Um, the only classic, classic, classic to make it to the shelf is Emily, Bronte, Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights. I loved that when I first read it at like 14 or so. Um, Caribbean novel In the Castle of My Skin by George Lamming. The Sellout by Paul Beatty, a couple of Jamaica Kincaid novels, and I also did my first dissertation, my Edinburgh dissertation, on A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James, No Telephone to Heaven by Michelle Cliff, and Lucy by Jamaica Kincaid. So with there you have my kind of most influential book, shall we say. On this shelf we have just more paperbacks, everything that kind of fits in this size. Um, most of these I've read probably a good few years ago now. We've got A Little Life here which is an example of one of those books that I absolutely loathed um, that made a big impression on me so I'm keeping it. We've got some of my favourites from this shelf are probably Toni Morrison's Jazz, Donna Tartt's um, The Secret History, Jhumpa Lahiri's The Namesake. I remember really liking The Historian actually as well and I got my whole family into that one. I think they all read it in the end. Okay, a little mini shelf here, more paperbacks. Um, we've got the first copy of Virgin Suicides I have. I don't know why I've got two of them. 
um, got Cormac McCarthy's The Road. So my loves, with this set of books, um, I have not read any of them yet. They are on my list of things to read. This was the original to be read um, bookshelf, which is now expanded as you are about to see rather embarrassingly. Um, but ones I'm excited to read here include The Grapes of Wrath, that's kind of a classic that I never got around to reading. Um, a Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth, my aunt gave me that one so I'm super excited to read that one. Another mini shelf including ooh, some books that I read a long time ago and some that I read more recently. Um, I read Fatherland in the last few years, um, Frog in the last few years but I definitely read that homicide one a good few years ago and The Princess Bride. <laughs> so we are finally at the bottom, you guys, of this kind of awkwardly placed shelf. Um, this one is uh, has obviously got some hardback kids books that I moved from up on the left, um, just so that I could group more of the adult books together, but I had to find space for these two. Yeah, obviously some Harry Potters are here, some Mallory Blackmans are here, and um, some Philip Reeves as well. But they are not in their full series because the paperbacks are hiding somewhere. Down at the bottom on the other side I have quite a random selection of stuff here and obviously I've had to just shove some things in the top here that I couldn't find room for elsewhere. I've got some fancier copies of things. This is actually the Wuthering Heights that I originally read. My stepdad sometimes gets these kind of fancy versions of books in so I sometimes get some of them. Um, Catch 22 I haven't read um, so that's on my list. I should probably move literally everything I haven't read into one place but I think that is something to catalogue better on my new bookshelves. I certainly, I certainly know where enough is to read for now. Um, we've got some more kind of uh, stuff that I've read recently like The Underground Railroad um, and Girl at War, some history books, some philosophy books here obviously my dictionary and thesaurus as well <laughs> old school okay my love so this is where it gets embarrassing because this is all to be read in fact most of this side of the shelf is to be read um it's amazing how many books i have managed to accumulate and not read some of them are gifts as i said a million times my dad got rid of a lot of his books before he went to memphis and gave a lot to me so i've got a lot of his books in my collection now as well so particularly all the ones that are super faded are his but yeah lots and lots to get through this year i've worked out um on this to be read shelf and the other one i should be able to do it in a year if i read three books a week so I'm kind of on a book buying ban at least until the Man Booker is announced for this year because I quite enjoyed doing the whole Man Booker thing last year so I think I'll do it again. But yes, ideally I will be finished with most of these books by the end of the year so I'm sorry if all my book videos have quite a random selection of books for the next um, few months because I'm trying to get through um, some stuff that I've bought but lots and lots here. Um, I will let you guys just peruse those. So my loves, last little um, sections here. We've got more to be read here and here. These are um, young adult books that I never got around to reading that I found. Um, these are lots of international Man Booker Prize winners and stuff. Um, then we've got some like school based books or uni books or theory books or history books <laughs> or philosophy books. The selection is quite random and it's something that I would like to kind of organise better in the future when I have a little bit more room. Um, I've got like jewellery boxes and stuff here and that stuff's all there just because it currently doesn't have any other place. Yeah, we've got plays, poetry down here at the bottom. Um, you can see my kind of ripped in half <laughs> National Theatre 2007 um, book of plays for young people. We were doing DNA at the time and I <laughs> managed to rip my copy in half. I had another NT Connections book but I don't know where that went to. So yeah, lots and lots of kind of random books here. So anyway you guys, that is everything for me. That is my shelf tour. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Of course, you do not need this many books. This is one of those hoarding things that I do but um, however you read, however you decide to read is more than wonderful. I love using things like Goodreads to keep track of things I've read as well. So if you do want to keep track of, your, of the books that you've read, but you don't want to keep all of them or whatever, then Goodreads is a really excellent website to use for that purpose. Or you can write notes. I also write notes on when I start and finish something now as well. 
anyway you guys that's it from me i hope that you enjoyed this i know it wasn't super in depth and everything but yeah it's something that i will probably do again in the future if you've got any suggestions for that future shelf tour then let me know and of course if you've got any suggestions for blog posts that you want um like a specific shelf tours on then also let me know i would love to do those for you guys but i think probably the next one's got to be the favorites shelf but yeah thank you guys so much for watching today i've got to get back to my reading because i've got like 150 books to read or something <laughs> um but yeah thank you guys for watching today and i'll see you very soon bye